Hello and welcome back. Um, for you, a few lectures uh, along the way. For me, straight after this lecture that I've done uh, this particular integral by using differentiation under the integral sign, and uh, I did show that the answer was in fact equal to the log of four. So as soon as I came off the set and I thought to myself, well, what about if we actually do this particular integral again, but this time let's have it in general form so that we have not a two and an eight, because what if we had there, for example, a three and a, I don't know, a 14 or something like that. What, how would the answer change? So do we have to do it again or can we get something in general form, which we can actually just use it as a formula. So for today, what I'm going to actually show you is how to do the very same integral but in more generalized form so it's going to be already parameterized if you prefer it um, so i'm going to write it as e to the minus ax and e to the minus bx where a and b of course are positive numbers for this to work and we're going to get of course an expression at the end which is going to be in terms of a and b. And of course, we're going to use differentiation under the integral sign. The workings for this are practically identical to when I've done it with just a two and um, uh, an eight that I ha we had in there. Okay, I'm going to call this particular integral i of a and b now, because of course, uh, once the integration takes place, which with respect to x, this will be in terms of a and b. So my i of a comma b is going to be the integral defined now as zero to infinity e to the minus ax. Uh, I'm gonna split the fraction because it's gonna be easier when I do the differentiations afterwards. So let's write it in this particular form, minus e to the minus bx over x dx. So what's my parameter here? Well, I already have parameters there, A and B if you want. It doesn't really matter which one I call a parameter. We can call the A, we can call the B. The last time that I've done this particular um, 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 integral, I, I used the two. So, so we just use B as a parameter for, for a change. So this time we're gonna treat this as now as the parameter for the uh, differentiation under the integral sign. So this time I'm gonna need to use partial from the beginning because of course I have two variables. So di by uh, differentiating now with respect to B, okay. Um, I'm not gonna put arguments A comma B, let's leave it as it is, is equal to of course, d by dB of this particular integral and uh, by Leibniz's uh, integral rule we have constant limits we can actually swap the differentiation and the integration so um, I need to write it again, I didn't leave enough space. I was planning to actually just uh, rub it off from there and move it inside, I don't have enough space. So let's uh, write it again. So this is now d by dB. And uh, the first uh, part will be e to the minus ax over x, which of course will be zero because the differentiation with respect to b, there's no b dependence in here, minus d by dB and now we're having e to the minus bx over x, and the whole integral is with respect to x, dx. Okay, let's make some room, tidy this. So first of all, um, we have the minus, and we got the one over x, which is independent of b. The x can go outside the partial, but not outside the integral, obviously. So this is going to be zero to infinity, the minus that I've got in there, one over x, and now this differentiation with respect to b, so if I differentiate this with respect to b, I'm going to get a minus x times e to the minus bx, close bracket, dx. And of course, that was my whole plan, is I wanted to get rid of the x's now, and of course here I also got rid of the minuses. So this integral now reduces to zero to infinity, minus times a minus a plus, so it's just very, very simply e to the minus b x dx. Okay, uh, standard integral uh, is going to be minus one over b, e to the minus bx 
to be evaluated between the limits of zero and infinity. Um, I don't like minuses like that, so I'm gonna make this into a plus and swap the limits. Okay, it's one of my kind of peculiarities, so I like to do this always. So when I'm putting, I'm not just obviously showing, taking limits or anything, we should be able to see what's going on in there. If x is equal to zero, this is one, so I'm gonna get a one over b. And uh, minus, if x goes to infinity, this is a positive constant, the b. So this, of course, will vanish. So minus zero or nothing. Okay, so the answer to what I'm getting is going to be one over b. So, so far what I found is not my integral, of course. I found that dA by dB in its simplest form is in fact one over b. So let's move it to this particular line. And we need to go one step back before we have an answer. So, clean the board. So my dA by dB is one over b. Uh, the fact that I got partials there makes absolutely no difference. Okay, so I'm going to find that my i is of course the log of b, if I integrate that, plus a constant. So um, this is my what I found so far. So for a suitable value of b now, I've got to evaluate this constant of integration. So that's my i. So I can say this so far is the log of b plus a constant. And what must I substitute in there in order to find my c? What value shall I put? So I'm going to let very, very simply, if b is the same as a, because you look what's gonna happen, both of these will be identical and canceling each other. So I'm gonna have the integral of zero, which of course is zero. I'm gonna get zero from this line here is equal to the log of um, a plus c. So my constant is of course minus the log of a. Okay, so I'm gonna put it inside my answer here. So c is minus log a. And of course I can write this as log b over a in one line. Okay, so now I have a general formula for any numbers that uh, a and b might be, so long as they're positive. So this particular integral reduces to the log of b over a. And this is the end of the lecture. This is the end of this particular question. And I'm definitely laughing now.